Hello my dear students this is Dr Rohit Daniel orthopedics faculty from Doc Tutorials this is going to be a quick recall session of all the orthopedic questions that were asked in the recently concluded INICT May 2025 exam if you look at the question paper i would have to say that it is a it was a moderately difficult one especially with respect to orthopedics of the eight questions that were asked two of them were very straightforward questions and were directly taken from previous year topics but the other questions were from previous year topics but the options were a little tricky many of the options were very similar to each other and unless you have an in depth knowledge of what is going on in each of these cases it is very difficult for you to answer the question i understand uh, anyway we will discuss these questions in a detailed manner uh, before we start i would like to tell you that this is a recall based question and answer session i have discussed with many of my students regarding the questions that were asked and many a time your recall may be different from some other students recall and the exact wording of these questions and the options may be a little different but the uh, the gist of the question i assume is absolutely correct so please go through the session and if you find that there is some key element that is different then i would all request you to put in uh, put that in the comments below so that we also get to know what is the difference there we'll start with the first question a 78 year old female presents with history of fall she has sustained intertrochanteric fracture what is the management so this is a, a question that was very similar to the one that was asked uh, last time also so what is the options here hemiarthroplasty proximal femoral intramedullary nailing orif or boot and bar cast so if these are the four options given then the answer would be proximal femoral intramedullary nailing so for intertrochanteric fracture there is only one treatment that is surgery and there are two implants that we can use one is the dynamic hip screw or dhs and the proximal femoral nailing or pfn okay if proximal femoral nail was given in the options that is the correct answer some students have told me that instead of this orif dynamic hip screw was given and there is no proximal femoral nailing if that is the case then dhs is the option so whichever has come for your exam whether it is pfn or dhs you have to choose that that is the correct answer question number 2 honda h pattern in bone scan is seen in which condition bilateral sacral insufficiency fracture sacroiliac joint arthritis marrow edema fourth option we are not sure what it is anyway this is a very straightforward one liner the answer is bilateral sacral insufficiency fracture so when you have bilateral sacral insufficiency fractures and you take a bone scan there is an increase uptake of the contrast there leading to this h shaped appearance here this is your honda h pattern question number 3 A 18-year-old male presents with swelling in his thigh. X-ray shows sunburst appearance. What is the diagnosis? I think this is a very straightforward question. The answer is osteosarcoma. Okay. What do you find in osteochondroma? Osteochondroma, you will see a swelling with a pedicle with an expanded end. There will be a pedicle with an expanded end. What is the finding in Ebbing sarcoma? You see a diaphyseal tumor with what? with an onion peel onion peel periosteal reaction and gct you will see an epiphyseal lesion with a classical soap bubble appearance so bubble appearance so for this question the correct answer would be osteosarcoma next question WHO recommended method of diagnosis of TB spinous CT x-ray culture or CBNAT this is again a very interesting question uh, see if you look at the WHO recommendation they recommend a battery of test that is the current recommendation that is they say that you have to use a multitude of tests such as CT MRI 
CT guided biopsy, CBNAT, all these things must be done together to identify tuberculosis. Why? Because it is very, very difficult to diagnose tuberculosis by a single method. So, this is the current criteria. But among these four, if you are asked which is the best criteria, it is always culture. Okay, culture. Culture is the best method of diagnosing a tuberculosis of the spine among these options because if you culture a sample and there is growth of the bacteria, then that is diagnostic of tuberculosis. If biopsy was there, then you would have to choose biopsy. Because biopsy is not there, you have to choose culture. If culture was not there, you could have chosen CBNAT or something like that. Okay, next question. A patient presents with fall on outstretched hand. He complains of pain in the anatomical snuff box. However, his x-ray is normal. What is the best next step? See, whenever there is fall on outstretched hand and there is pain in the anatomical snuff box, we must always rule out scaphoid fracture. Scaphoid fracture must always be ruled out. Okay. So, whenever there is a scaphoid fracture, many a time what can happen is that the x-ray would be normal because the fracture would be very tiny and would not be picked up on an x-ray. These kind of fractures are called occult, occult fractures. Occult means hidden, hidden or occult fractures. And the investigation of choice for occult fracture is what? MRI. MRI is the investigation of choice. Okay, if MRI is not available, you can go for CT. If CT and MRI both are not available or if the patient is not affording any of these investigations, then you can put a cast for 14 days and at the end of 14 days, you can remove the cast and take a check x-ray to see if there is fracture or not. Okay. So, if you are asked a question like this, the best option would be to do an MRI. Question number 6. A patient who is a known case of rheumatoid arthritis presents with atlanta occipital pain. What should be ruled out? So, what are the options here? Osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, fracture or atlanta occipital subluxation or dislocation. So, this is a straightforward question. One of the most serious complications of rheumatoid arthritis is what? atlanta occipital dislocation or subluxation. Okay. So, whenever a patient comes with a pain, especially in the upper part of the neck, always rule out atlanto axial subluxation. So, that is the answer here. Question number 7, which is true regarding nerve grafting? Now, this is a little bit of tricky question because I have spoken to many students and many students have given me a different version of this question. Unless we know word by word what each of these statements were, it is very difficult to arrive at a correct answer here. Anyway, I will try my best here. So, the options as per most students were, option A was used to repair peripheral nerves, B used in facial nerve repair, fibrin glue is used during repair, saphenous nerve and anterior introsious nerve are most commonly used. Okay. So, which are the true statements here? See, option A, it is used to repair peripheral nerves. That is true. Can be used in facial nerve repair. That is also true. So, fibrin glue is used during repair. That is also true. Saphenous nerve and anterior introsious nerve are most commonly used. If the wording was most commonly used, then this statement is wrong. Okay. Sural nerve. Sural nerve is the most commonly used nerve for nerve grafting. And rarely saphenous nerve can be used and very, very rarely in extremely rare situations, anterior introsious nerve can be used. But most commonly, sural nerve is used. So, option A, B and C seems to be correct. So, you could choose option B. Again, again, please keep in mind what I just told you earlier. Unless we get to know the exact wordings of each of these statements, it is very difficult to arrive at the proper answer. If this is the statements given, then the option, correct option would be option B, A, B and C. Question number 8. A patient who is known case of osteomyelitis presents with pain, redness and warmth in the affected region. Which of the following organism cannot be responsible for this infection? Is it Streptococcus, Mycobacterium TB, E. coli or Klebsiella? So, 
see what are the findings here the patient has osteomyelitis but the patient is presenting with pain redness and warm this means that the signs of inflammation are there signs of inflammation such as ruber dollar calor all those things are present which is seen in ordinary bacterial infection such as streptococcus E. coli and Klebsiella, these are your ordinary bacteria. These, when they produce osteomyelitis, will produce these signs of inflammation and they produce a warm abscess. But in the case of mycobacterium tuberculosis, the signs of inflammation would be very, very minimal. That is why they produce something called as a cold abscess. Okay, mycobacterium tuberculosis produces a cold abscess where there will be infection, there will be osteomyelitis and other associated infection, but there won't be much signs of inflammation, redness, the increased pain, or there will not be much of uh, increased warmth or all those kind of features will not be present in the case of a mycobacterial infection. So that is the answer there.